Welcome back. A renowned Canadian entrepreneur has recently been added to the Automotive Hall of Fame. Austrian-Canadian business leader Frank Stronach turned Magna International from a tiny venture into a global success story. And as somebody who's been in the business for many decades, he does not agree with the proposed 25% tariffs being placed, threatened rather, on the auto sector by the United States. In fact, he says the idea of a trade war between such close neighbours is really just a misunderstanding. I think there's some commu communications gaps. I think that should be revisited. And I think uh, we have been such great neighbors with the United States, vice versa, so that there shouldn't be. Do they can look at other countries, etc. cetera. I, I think that should be analyzed a little better. Mm -hmm. Magna is a company that does business now, operates in almost 30 countries around yes, the world. Yes. So it's clearly benefited from international trade. And the history of Magna, uh, many people might not realize, it goes all the way back to 1957. So Magna yeah. existed in, a, in, in the, uh, the pre-free trade world for many years, yes. the protectionist world, I would think, yes. and many years after in the free trade yes. world. How important has free trade been to the growth of Magna International? I think we, one way or the other, we would have grown without the free trade, right? Because we have a very unique system. As you know, I started uh, Magna and, uh, and brought it up to about 30, 35 billion in sales. And uh, I think when I stepped out, it was about 140,000 people. And I think we have over 170. 170,000 people now. So we have this unique system whereby we have a, a corporate constitution whereby the employees uh, get a base salary. The base salary has to be average to the competition within the area and then they get 10% of the profits in shares and in cash. What has been the, uh, the key to expanding Magna to be a global giant? Well, we focused, we've done a lot of research, we focused on technology and uh, we uh, stayed very close with the customers and tried to, try to gauge their needs and, uh, and we, yeah, we gave them good service. Take me back to the beginning. Magna began, or the predecessor company began as a tool making company. At yes. some point you saw auto parts as a great, great opportunity. Yes, I, I'm a tool and die maker by trade and I started the tool and die shop in 57 and Dufferin and DuPont in Toronto and uh, it grew and then I could see this enormous potential and there was a small public company called Magna Electronics and I kind of sold into Magna Electronics and sort of was the largest shareholder. And then I changed the name to Magna International and uh, and we just kept growing and growing and growing. Right? I, I followed the results of Magna for yeah. many years. The yes. one thing the company has always succeeded at is increasing its content per vehicle. Magna yes. has always succeeded yes. yeah. in yeah. convincing automakers to put more Magna parts yeah. in those cars. How, how have you been able well, to do that? Well, it's when I get asked well, how, how, how can somebody grow that much, and uh, I said uh, business basically is quite easy. All you have to do is make a better product for a better price. And you'll be able to do that. Our focus is the human capital. So we're constantly thinking, what do we have to do that employees not only work harder, but also think. And, and thereby we created this uh, corporate constitution, which guaranteed the employees a portion, 10% of the profits. And then we have a labor charter of rights. And we also, uh, we had hotlines. Uh, I remember when I put in the hotlines, the managers were not too happy about it. They said, are you spying on us? Mm -hmm. And now they're very happy that hotlines exist. The hotlines are basically encourages people, if something isn't right, if something isn't fair, if something is racist, whatever, that you can call. You don't have to give your name and then we investigate because it's bad business. If you be unfair or if you don't do things right, that makes people unhappy. Unhappiness is contagious, and when you get unhappy people, unhappy workers, there's no way you can make a quality product at a competitive price. So it's Magna is really a system, it's a culture. Magna has clearly been competitive and it's clearly been productive as well. The, the share price tells us that, the, the financials tell us that. But we often hear that the Canadian economy is not as productive or as competitive as it can be. Do, do you agree? No, I don't. Uh, I, uh, I think 
the Canadian workers as good as any any other worker, right? If 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 it's the right system, I think they put out. Uh, uh, naturally, uh, our bureaucracy is climbing, and that uh, that has a bearing. And I remember about 50 years ago, uh, you know, when I started out in business, when the first computers came on the market. Uh, it, it, it said, look, if you got one of those computers, you can eliminate uh, one office floor, right? And now, 50 years later, I see 50 times more office buildings and office floors. And what do you think they're doing there? Push paper. And that's choking society, right? That's like, uh, yeah, so we have to take a look at it, like even the same thing uh, if you uh, if you have too much cholesterol, right? Uh, your heart won't be able to pump it. And uh, the same thing would hold through if we keep growing like uh, with this enormous uh, bureaucracy, we're choking, we're choking the economy. And if the economy doesn't work, nothing else will work. You seem to be saying government needs to keep its spending under control, is that it? Well, spending and uh, make it, uh, well, I think we should have a department whereby and give, uh, give uh, government employee bonuses if they say we can eliminate X, 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 X. And do we we gotta we we're way over government way way too many way too many uh, paragraphs and laws and rules and we we have to we have to get we have to get slimmer. What about taxation? Another uh, current topic with the U.S. under Donald Trump having reduced taxes significantly. Should should Canada well, follow? Well, uh, yeah, but uh, you can uh, you can reduce uh, if you reduce taxes, you gotta you gotta make the government slimmer, right? Uh, spend less. How important, you're an immigrant of course to, to Canada, you were an immigrant many years ago, how important has immigration been to, to, the, to, the, to the company? Well, it, uh, I, I sometimes I'm a little critical of the, of the bureaucrats, right, in government. But I remember when I, I when I was 20 years of age, I wanted to see the world, and I applied to South Africa, Australia, the United States, and Canada. And I've always said the Canadian bureaucrats are the best. They came first forwards with the visa. So uh, again, we should be we uh, we have to be somewhat selective, and most of all, we if you, if you do too many at once, right? You, you, you're going to change the culture. There's a reason why people wanted to come to Canada because it was such a great country and and but if you got too many and all of a sudden they want to do things, well, we in the old country it was like that. You, you can't. If you come here, adopt and, and adopt the Canadian way and that's a great way and uh, I, I kind of constantly preach that and uh, and uh, yeah, and life goes on. Okay, the automotive industry. What what are the cars of the of the future going to look like? Even the near term future. We we hear so much about driverless vehicles. What what are your thoughts? Well, uh, well, the future vehicle uh, will have four wheels, right? Uh, I think that's important. Uh, I think uh, electric cars, and uh, we we need other sources of energy to to drive the cars, because there's only so much oil in the ground. Uh, so there could be hydrogen, and et cetera, et cetera. The driverless thing here, I'm not totally sure, right? But we can experiment a bit, you know? I mean, if you, on main arteries, it might be okay. You have to drive on, the, and then if you get to a main artery, it might be okay. But if you got, uh, if you're crisscrossing, you got uh, side streets, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not totally sure. But anyway, uh, let's try it, and uh, let's get some, uh, Let's set a few roads aside where we can experiment a bit. That was Frank Stronach, founder and now honorary chairman at Magna International and Stronach Group as well, and a real gentleman as well. I enjoyed my visit to him at the big Magna yeah. compound in Aurora. He was sitting in a room uh, surrounded by art. I think you saw some of that art in the background, and he was working uh, as we set up the cameras on uh, what his, his, his latest venture is, and, that, and that's humane farming. He runs a farm called Adina Farms that produce, wow. produces meat, uh, but it's all uh, uh, pasture, grass-fed, uh, pasture-fed uh, uh, animals, and he's uh, very, very passionate about uh, animal, uh, animal welfare. Seems like a real visionary. I mean, um, the way he's kind of a little bit maybe ahead of the curve on this latest project is kind of the way he seemed uh, in the 50s and 60s and 70s when he really realized it was all about people and uh, how to incent them properly. Um, and, you know, in, in not just hearing about um, uh, the Magna, but kind of his, what he alluded to in the beginning was 
uh, a misunderstanding on this whole tariff thing mm -hmm. uh, between friends, a bit of a family quarrel. And, um, you know, I think that that kind of response, I think, is, is kind of the better one. And fade the fear. Uh, this will work out over time. It might be with us a little bit more than we like, but it, this too will pass. You've been a holder uh, on behalf of your clients for many years of Magna stock, correct? Magna has been a wonderful story for us. Uh, we continue to hold it. Uh, we still model them growing 12% uh, over our forecast horizon on er earnings per share, 30% free cash flow growth. And it still trades at a very sober 8.6 times uh, valuation. So good balance sheet, great company, very well run. Um, still got more to go. Magna International and Greg Newman.